sneaker botting is dead. At least that's what most people have been saying recently. And actually, people have been saying that for years. Spoiler alert, I don't think that's the case. Watch till the end of this video on tips on how to succeed under today's sneaker botting conditions. Over the last year, there has been several bot companies, proxy companies, and cook groups, many of whom were very successful during their prime, that recently went out of business. Expenses associated with operating bots have been going up and up and up, and profits have been going down and down. Back in 2019 through 2020, profit margins were fantastic. Footsites botting was thriving, Yeezy botting was thriving, Shopify was great, Nike botting was a little bit on and off, but it worked here and there. Then in 2021, a lot of botters pivoted towards console and GPU reselling, which was insanely profitable. At some point, foot sites changed their online release procedure so that first come first serve stock numbers are non-existent. The Yeezy brand oversaturated their stock numbers so that there's no profit to be made. And as of right now, we don't even know what the future of Yeezys are going to look like. Shopify and tier zero stores seem to backdoor seemingly a huge portion of their stock, leaving only crumbs for everybody else. So it's no wonder why resellers are leaving in droves. Platforms that were extremely easy to bot at scale is no longer in the picture. While expenses remain high and profit margins are taking a nosedive. So case closed, reselling is dead. Or is it? Sometime around 2015, 2016, I was getting into the reselling space. So I went online, looked around, asked some of my friends and the response that I got was always the same. Sneaker reselling isn't worth it anymore. Bots have taken over. You don't stand a chance. And I kind of just took their word for it. Because of that, I never really considered it until one day in 2018, I just decided to try it out. Long story short, it worked out. So it got me thinking all this time, how much money would I have made if instead of starting in 2018, I started in 2015? Because of that, in many ways, I resented the phrase reselling is dead. And almost every year I hear the same thing, reselling is dead. But is this time any different? It depends on your definition of dead. If your definition is you can't make a profit anymore reselling sneakers, you're just wrong. If your definition is no one is doing it anymore, you're partly right. In a sense where interest for it isn't anywhere near as it used to be. Here's my definition of whether or not sneaker reselling is dead. Is the amount of time and effort worth it for the profit that you produce? Moving forward, I will summarize this question in four words. Is it worth it? This is the question that only you can answer. For people that are only financially motivated and do not care about sneakers at all, I think they're more likely to say that it's not worth it for them. For people who do love sneakers, love the chase and excitement of every release, love getting the sneakers in their hands, for those kinds of people, I think reselling is worth it. I happen to fall under this category. It's simple. You get paid for doing something that you think is fun. Even though some months don't make as much money as other months, it is absolutely worth it. Imagine lounging around, playing video games, or any other activity that you genuinely find enjoyable. Then a few months later, hey, I have an extra $5,000 in my bank account. So if you love sneakers and you want to make money from it, don't get discouraged by everyone saying that botting and reselling is dead. In my opinion, it's not a bad side hustle. In fact, being that the number of platforms that's worth going for has significantly decreased, I don't find myself taking 12 hours setting up for 30 different websites anymore, and I'm not spending $3,000 every month on proxies anymore either. So my level of risk and expenses goes down significantly. Nowadays, it's pretty chill. You set up for a few websites, start your tasks at the correct times, and then sit back and hope for the best. As long as you know what you're doing, your success rate will be fairly high. Between June and the first week of November, I'm well on my way to making $10,000 in profit. That's a span of about five months, but since basically I broke even in June, one can argue that you can achieve this in four months. As a side note though, I did personally make some key mistakes, which resulted in lower estimated profits, so this number could be higher. The entire premise of Sneakers to Riches Season 2 is to demonstrate what I would do if I was just a regular botter, not getting everything for free, accounting for every single expense, using bots and information that can be accessible to anyone, and factoring all of those into the calculations. 
The series isn't finished yet, so if you want to follow along to see exactly how I make that money and how I progress, I will link the playlist to the web series in the description. I know some people will be like, damn, that's kind of trash, 10K over the course of five months. You're right. But number one, in my opinion, reselling with botting isn't supposed to be a full-time income. There's just way too many risks and variables involved, and I can't imagine what it would be like to depend on a set of sneaker releases just to put food on the table. And number two, as I mentioned before, it no longer takes up a considerable amount of time. Depending on how many websites release, the actual drops themselves can be as short as five to 15 minutes. Admittedly though, if it's a major release like the Jordan 4 Midnight Navy and perhaps the upcoming Jordan 1 Lost and Founds, it could last for a few hours. I think packing up individual orders take the most time. Although if you value your time more than a few extra dollars per sale, you always have the option to just send out your inventory to a consignment store like Flight Club or Stadium Goods and just have them take care of selling your items. So if you're past the initial learning phase and you're fairly competent on how to set up the main websites, your setup time could be anywhere between 10 to 30 minutes and then go for the releases in the morning and then when the shoes come in, you can just send them all to consignment and wait for the money to flow in. It hasn't been as stressful and involved as it used to be. By the way, I am well aware that there's many other ways to make money with sneakers than just botting. Some people do sneaker investments, some people pay a resale price and sell them for an even higher resale price. Some people flip used sneakers, you can start a consignment store. Some people go to outlets, thrift stores, etc. One can make the argument that these are even more profitable than botting. But remember, you can bot while doing these at the same time. You can bot while owning a consignment store. You can bot and do sneaker meetups. You can bot and go to thrift stores and look for deals. Botting is another source of income that can supplement whatever it is that you're doing. Because of that, for me, reselling and botting is not dead. Although it isn't dead, it isn't the same either. We just have to maneuver and adapt accordingly. And this is how I think we botters have to go about it moving forward for the best chance to succeed. And when I say succeed, I'm not talking about pure checkout numbers. They've kind of always been irrelevant. Obviously, it's important to check out, but it always needs to be in the context of expenses. So under today's botting conditions, we need to be extra focused on cost efficiency. Not too long ago, it was extremely common to own several bots, all of whom support the same platforms. And the reason why this was necessary was because back then you just didn't know which bots would actually work the best. And it seemed to change every single week. A lot of bots resulted in high operating expenses since most of the renewal fees for each one ranged between $45 to $75 a month. And that can add up pretty quickly. Not only that, we needed to buy the proxies, gmails, and servers to be able to run all of these bots effectively. And you can see how this can easily turn into a You can see how easily this can turn into a huge money pit especially if you're not getting enough checkouts to cover these costs. And even more so if you're not getting checkouts at all. But that's not the move anymore. First, find out what platforms are actually worth going for. Second, find out how you can effectively bot these platforms with as few bots as possible. In other words, try not to have any other bots with overlapping websites. For example, Wrath and Valor basically support the same websites, have similar performance, etc. Although these two are probably the best bots out right now, I don't think it's an efficient use of your money to be paying for both renewal fees at the same time, unless you're using it for scaling purposes. Third, for proxies, try to find a set of ISP proxies and a set of residential proxies that work for all the websites that you plan to bot. For ISP proxies, it's a little bit more difficult since proxy protection is quite effective, but if you find a proxy range that works really well, do not let go of it and try to keep that proxy range for as long as possible. For residential proxies, it's a little bit easier to give you guys a recommendation. Live proxies. Fast, reliable, works on everything basically. I think it's a must have if you're a botter. And then cut out any other subscriptions that you aren't using anymore or any other subscriptions that isn't giving you a return on investment. Now, with those resources, try to go for every single profitable release for every single website that is dropping them. Time and time again, I've seen botters completely skip platforms, even though they have bots and proxies that support those websites anyway. So it would cost them exactly $0 extra. 
During 2020, 2021, it was very common to see botters only going for Foot Locker and Yeezy Supply and skipping everything else. Why? Because they were the easiest websites to bot, but they were leaving so much money on the table by not going for anything else. Also, with your bots and proxies, don't limit yourself to only the most hype sneakers. Go for everything that's profitable. Funko Pops, Trading Cards, Street Wear, and one of my favorite, Brick Flips. Over the course of the Sneakers to Riches series, I've made hundreds of dollars from brick flips alone. Sneakers that were sitting that you didn't even need a bot for. And here are some examples of that. So how do you get all of that information to make sure that you're using your bots properly in the most cost efficient way, taking full advantage of your resources? Doing the research yourself to make sure that you're on top of every single profitable release can take a lot of time. After all, it's also important to be time efficient to make reselling worth it. So you need a team that will do the research for you. So all you have to worry about is setting up correctly, which by the way is your team should also help you with. Imagine if you can hire a team of experts who specialize in many different platforms to do all the research for you so that for every single release, you know what's gonna drop, where it's gonna drop, how it's gonna drop, whether or not it's profitable, and tell you how to optimize your botting setup. How much would hiring a group of people like that even cost? A few hundred dollars? A few thousand dollars? Actually, it can be as cheap as $15 a month. The team that I'm referring to is your cook group. In my opinion, this is something that's even more important than the bots and proxies that you have because your group will give you the most up-to-date information on how to conquer this rapidly changing environment. Because at the end of the day, if you're spending a few hundred dollars on your bot setup every month, you don't know how to use it to your full advantage, and as a result, you don't cop any shoes, you're actually just wasting your time and money. So you need a team that has your back, answer any questions for you, guide you in the right direction, and show you the ropes if you're new. So the sponsor of today's video, WAP, can help find the right team for you. The one that I've personally been a part of for several years is Notify. This is the one that I've been using for my information throughout the Sneakers to Riches series, and they've also recently reduced their price from $60 to $49 a month. Another one that I've had a good experience with is AK Chefs. These two are considered to be some of the best groups to be in, and their price reflects that. So if that's out of your budget, feel free to try some of the lower priced options. Remember, cheaper doesn't always mean lower quality. If you want, you can try several of the lower priced options at the same time, and then compare them to see which group provides more value for you. Furthermore, some groups even have free trials, so you can try before you buy. Even if you have a $0 budget, WAP can help you get started. Because for a limited time, we will be giving away $60 for free in WAP credits to three lucky winners who sign up to WAP using the link in the description. So to join the giveaway, click on the WAP link in the description. Then click sign up, sign up with Discord because it's super fast. And then go to your profile and comment your username. And if you win, you can use the credits for any of the groups within the WAP marketplace or even for bot rentals. Anyways, back on my tips on how to be more cost efficient. Whichever group you decide to go with, unless you're just starting out and experimenting with different ones for the time being, I would highly recommend not being in more than one or two groups at the same time, unless you really feel like it's justified. Because same with bots, groups also have a lot of overlaps in terms of features and offerings. Obviously, some are better than others in certain areas, but from my personal experience, being in more than two is overkill. But you absolutely need to have at least one. Because even for me, sometimes I find it hard keeping up with how fast everything changes. So you have to make sure that your setup and methods for how to bot websites are up to date with assistance of the collective effort of the staff, owners, and community members of your group. Not only that, but they can give you specifics on some of the vague subjects that I've been alluding to throughout this entire video that I'm not allowed to publicly speak about. So if you are interested, don't be afraid to give it a try. But as always, success is never guaranteed. Anyways, my name is Butterboy Nova. I hope you've enjoyed and I'm out of here.